Hey, it's Michael, and welcome to another podcast episode. Before I get into today's episode, we wanted to make an offer to you. If you go to firmsconsulting.com, you will see a pop-up or you'll see a place to add in your email address or you can register on the Firms Consulting website. If you register onto that website, you get put into an exclusive list. And what you get in that exclusive list is samples of the content we have available to FC Insiders. So that said, I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Firms Consulting Podcast. So today, I'm going to talk about value-based fees. And I'm going to explain to you why value-based fees really work, because they are misunderstood. And they are misunderstood in a very fundamental way, right? So let me explain what value-based value -based fees are initially. Let's assume you um, go to a client and you tell them that, look, we believe we can generate $100 million of savings. And because we can generate $100, billion, uh, $100 million worth of savings, um, we should get paid $10 million for this because the value we are bringing is so enormous to you. Now, think about this for a second, right? Most of you would agree. Most of you listening to this podcast would say, hey, hold on a second. That makes sense. I'm going to generate $100 million of value for this client. I should maybe get paid 5% or 10%. That seems reasonable, right? Because that's what value-based fees are. You get paid for the value you create. It could be the opposite. It could be that you could say you could create $200 million worth of new revenue. And that's how you build in your fee structure. You go to a client and say, look, we can create $200 million worth of revenue. And therefore, our fee structure, which is basically 10% of that, is definitely worth it, right? The return is significant to you. Now, if you're thinking that makes sense, then you've misunderstood a core concept of economics. And... I'm going to step out of this example to give you an understanding of this economics concept using a different example, right? Let's assume you have certain skills in software engineering and you work at a company like, I don't know, Adobe, Facebook or something like that, like one of those you know, very uh, respected tech companies. And because you have this amazing skill, you go to your boss and say, well, you know, I have this amazing skill, and because I have this amazing skill, you've got to give me a 20% increase, right? The problem with your logic there is that's not how economics works when it comes to markets. In economics, you are worth what the market says you're worth. So, for example, if there's another person out there in the market, right, who has the same skills as you, and there's a lot of them, your worth is not judged by your skills. It's judged by the availability of your skills. And there's a lot of people in the market, your company could say, okay, you know what, you want to get 20% more, we can't afford to pay you. And if you leave, they'll just hire someone else at a lower rate. So the insight here is that your salary is not exactly determined by your skill, but by the availability of the skill in the market. That's a very important insight, which people don't really get, right? If you were a lawyer and you had a skill as a lawyer that many people had in the market, you couldn't charge high rates. Because since many people could offer that uh, a skill, the leverage lies with the buyer. The only way to charge higher rates is to have a skill or some capability that the rest of the market doesn't have. Now, how does this link to value-based fees? Well, when a lot of companies think about value-based fees, they never ask themselves, is there anyone else who could do this? Because if there are other firms that could do this, when I say do this, they could generate the $100 million cost saving or $200 million of revenue then value-based fees don't work because there is someone else in the market who could do it and could probably undercut you. That's an important insight to have. It's a critical insight to have. It's the example why value-based fees don't work as well in the market. People just think it's about the value you create. No, it's about the value you create, but it's whether you are the only one who could create that value. If the client believes you are the only one who could create that value, then you could go with that model. If the client believes many other firms could create that value, then they put out a tender, they allow many firms to bid, 
And they generally will go with a firm that sometimes is the highest, but usually they don't do that, right? So when a firm hires a McKinsey or a BCG, the client believes that, hey, McKinsey or BCG has something other companies don't have. So the client believes that the skill is not common in the market. So when you are working with a client and you want to go on a value-based fee approach, it's important you communicate to the client that you have an ability to do this that the rest of the market doesn't have. Remember, it's not in, this is the insight. It's not enough that you can generate $200 million worth of fees. It's the fact that the way you generate the $200 million worth of fees is unique and is unique in a way that is beneficial to a client. Basic economics, right? Think of a, you know, it's, it's, it's always a misunderstood concept. People always think the skills they have is what determines how much they get paid. It's actually the scarcity of those skills that determines how much you get paid. The same with a consulting firm. Value-based fees is not based on whether you can generate the value. It's whether you are the only one who could generate that value. And you can see this all the time in consulting work that becomes commoditized. It's something like uh, business process and engineering. Highly commoditized work. When firms put out a tender, they usually go for the lowest cost provider, right? Outsourcing centers. A significant way to cut costs. But have you ever heard of someone winning an outsourcing tender because they were the best at it? No, it's a combination of price versus value, right? And it's usually on the lower end of that scale. So anything you compete in, it's not enough whether you're adding value to the client. Ask yourself whether you are the only one who could do that. The odds are you are not the only one who could do that. Then the question becomes, can you do it in a way that is unique? And can you get the client to understand that your way is unique? And if you can do that, then value-based fees work. If you cannot do that, don't try value-based fees because you're going to get upset with the client when they don't want to pay you what you think you're worth because the reality is you are not worth that if your skill is available in, in you know, surplus capacity in the market. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write in and I'll be more than happy to post additional um, feedback. And that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing the episode. Finally, I want you to remember that the only way to get access to our special offers, the only way to get our special pricing, and the only way to get samples of our content is to join the list on firmsconsulting.com. It's the only way also to get access to our unique advanced content that we make available to insiders. So if you want to get a sneak peek of things, test it out, see what's in there, this is the place to go. And finally, I want to thank you again for making us one of the largest podcast channels around the world for careers and for the 2 million downloads and counting.